Good morning to our honorable participants and guests who are joining us today in this morning's symposium. It is a pleasure to be part of the esteemed set of panelists of today's event tackling the prospects of circular economy in the Philippines and APEC region. Again, I am Ayla Gutierrez from the Asian Institute of Management, Dr. Andrew L. Tan Center for Tourism. And in the next 15 minutes or so, I will be presenting the topic on circular economy and Philippine tourism. So without further ado, next slide, please. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, many of us have become aware of the negative impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic to industries across the globe. And tourism was not an exception. As suggested by several studies and researchers, the pandemic exposed tourism as an already sick industry played with crisis and tensions that have historically existed. And while the COVID-19 pandemic is challenging long established economic constructs, it also presents a rare opportunity for us to change the economic software of the industry by providing stakeholders like you and me who are here today, a time and a chance to rethink and reimagine how tourism is operated. Ideally, when I say reimagine, I would mean that we use our creative juices or rack our brains to rethink how we would like tourism industries to operate. As it should, part and parcel of reimagining or rethinking is the acceptance and recognition of the destructive, if not violent dimensions of travel and tourism as a means of capitalist accumulation from issues of social injustices to environmental degradation, among others. Most importantly, this process requires an acknowledgement that something must be changed in the way we do things. Maybe it's time for us to rethink or ask ourselves some questions such as how can one mitigate tourism's adverse environmental and social impacts? Or maybe how can we ensure the industry's overall resilience? And what kind of future do we want tourism to have? And to build back better, a new thinking, a new framing of tourism activities is actually needed. And I argue in this presentation that a shift to sustainable circular economy in the industry should be placed at the forefront of developing the industry for the new normal. Next slide, please. So for this session, I'd like to propose the idea that in reimagining and rethinking what Philippine tourism can look like in the post-pandemic or in the new normal, the concept of circular economy is to be understood as a critical component. And with this, I intend to answer four things in this presentation. Just to echo um, Dr. Orbeta a while ago, I'll be presenting um, what circular economy is, what the principles of CE means, and what CE or what the principles of CE and how it can be applied to the uh, tourism in Philippine, tourism and hospitality industry in the Philippines. And of course, finally, what needs to be done? What can we do as stakeholders in the industry? So next slide, please. First, let's talk about circular economy. What is it really? So as discussed briefly by our lead convener, Dr. Orbeta, as opposed to a linear economy that assumes a take, make, and waste pattern of production and consumption, circular economy, or CE, is also known as closing the life cycle system, wherein we reconsider waste as a new resource that can be reused in the system. It is considered as a sustainability concept with the goal of increasing the value of products and resources. So for example, water and energy, so that it can stay and be used in the economy as long as possible, thereby reducing waste generation. Emphasized by CE is the restorative and regenerative principles for production, distribution and consumption. And maybe as you can imagine, this implies a radical change in the current production system and consequently in the way of doing of companies, policymakers, legislators, and even to us as private citizens. Next slide, please. And to expound this concept further, let's talk about some basic principles that also are applied in tourism. 
First is design out waste and pollution. Next, please. Emphasized by this principle is the idea that waste and pollution is a consequence of our decisions and activities. And as mentioned and emphasized by Dr. Paler a while ago, it is actually our decisions, our basic daily decisions, whether to bring a paper bag or rely on plastic grocery bags or to bring our own water bottles versus buying plastic water bo bottles. These are basically daily decisions that affect the entire system. Next is keep products and materials in use. It's basically the concept of using things versus using them up. So it asks the questions, are we using this resource or just wasting it? Like for example, do we need to keep the water running when we're brushing our teeth or do we throw out our scratch papers or can we use or can we reuse them for some other purposes? And finally, the last principle of regenerating natural systems, which highlights the idea that there is no such thing as waste. Everything is a food for something else. So for example, a dead leaf that fell off a tree can be used by other insects and animals. And again, as mentioned a while ago, plastic containers being used for bricks, for houses, or cooking oils recycled to power up vehicles. So these basic principles, you might be wondering, um, these might be a bit too complex yet simple at the same time, but you might be wondering how is this or how can this be applied to the resin? Next slide, please. So as far as circular, this, uh, circular economy discourse is concerned, it has been predominantly focused on production industries or production manufacturing, while very little discussion has been made on service-dominated industries such as tourism. Um, and of course, very little also has been discussed about the role of travel and tourism in the transition to circular economy. So the, the, the reality is that tourism is deeply interlinked and dependent on multiple key resource flows, assets, and commodity value chains in society from agriculture to food, to the built environment, to transport industries, among others. And in fact, tourism as a sector is a huge consumption, is, a, is where huge consumption of energy, water and food waste, congestion problems and CO2 emissions take place. So shown, shown in this slide is actually just a bird's eye view perspective of the environmental hotspots of hotel, restaurants and mice industries. So just imagine uh, having a quick glance at this um, from the source of electricity, production of food and souvenir, among others. It just goes to show that um, hotels, restaurants and mice already consume a lot of um, environmental products. But this is more complex in reality because this just goes to show that each tourism industry sectors and actors exhibit differences in the type and intensity of asset and material use. I mean, just imagine if we look at the experience of or the value chain of um, transport services such as aircrafts, ferries, boats, um, that would be very much different from the needs, for example, of hotels um, and restaurants or, or with the small time tour operators, right? So again, it's a complex scenario when we talk about tourism per se. And in practice, circular economy transformation pathways will definitely differ between sectors and market contexts. So how do we go about this seemingly intricate, intricate endeavor? Next slide, please. Now, because tourism is dubbed as a complex and fragmented industry, next please, that is simply interlinked with and dependent on multiple value chains in society from agriculture to transport industries, it is definitely hard to identify where the natural resources are extracted from and where they end up in. So I propose here on the right side, another perspective that is by looking at, not just in a value chain, but also looking at the core product of tourism and hospitality, which is about designing experiences. Thus, the circular economy model can be incorporated through designing a sustainable and circular experiences that goes beyond the sensory or material-based products 
but also instead satisfies the effective cognitive, behavioral, and relationship components. Um, and here, the transformational potential of tourism rests, of course, on the significance of immaterial experiences and socially engaging encounters between hosts and guests. So um, you might be thinking right now, how do we actually apply this in actual businesses or how does this actually operate in, in, um, in day to day life? So in the next few slides, I will be sharing with you some cases that, um, that exhibits how circular economy can actually be applied or practiced in tourism. Next slide, please. So the first case is that of the Masumi G Reserve an internationally awarded privately managed conservation area known for its sustainable conservation effort and innovative geotourism practices. Next, please. Masumi Jiu Reserve is actually located in Baras Rizal, whose beginning can be traced from uh, beginning in 1996 um, through a public private restoration project signed to restore a total of 400 hectares of landscapes in the area. And it is only in 2016 that Masumi opened itself to the public for geotourism purposes. And for years now, uh, Masumi offers low volume trail experiences while supporting local communities surrounding the area. So since its public opening, Masumi um, followed a low impact and high value approach that integrates mindful engineering. That means if we take a closer look at the photo, I'm sorry if it's a bit too small. Uh, if you look at the web or the sapot, the, the web-like um, infrastructure there, you would notice that none of these developments, such as these, interfere with the landscape. So none of these web-like structure actually touch the limestones and the trees in the area. And so um, apart from the, for, of imposing mindful engineering, they also made sure that policy enforcement with guests are very much upheld, wherein guests are not only um, asked to follow rules, but are also educated on how they can practice um, conservation um, in their own daily lives. So here in the case of Masumi, circular economy is adapted by ensuring that tourism operations in the area facilitate environmental conservation wherein visitors again are educated and local produced are local produce are offered to guests and where local community members are employed as park rangers or trail guides and they themselves could talk about the um, the local flora and fauna found in the area as well as the local culture and traditions that are showcased um, along the trails and attesting to the efforts of Masumi in, um, in, in incorporating circular economy in their daily activities, um, Masumi now hosts about 400 or more than 400 species of wildlife, many of which are rare and endemic to the Philippines. So next, please. Now let's look at another case, this time of a resort. Um, let's look at the case of the Luyon Beach and Mountain Resort located in Puerto Princesa, Palawan. Um, the Luyon is actually a multi-awarded resort dubbed as one of the leaders or pioneers in the green movement taking place in the tourism and hospitality sector in the country. Next, please. So it, whenever I talk about the Luyon, it actually represents us to me. It, it appears as an epitome of the circular economy, as the entire um, resort complex actually functions primarily by using green technologies, such as water saving equipment and energy saving measures. So the movement um, the, of the Luyon is actually towards sustainability and is guided by the principles of three R's, um, by the zero carbon resorts project. So the three R's are um, include replacing inefficient appliances and equipment, reducing energy consumption, and redesigning buildings into more self-sufficient and carbon neutral structures. And part of their efforts, again, if you could look at the photos, is, for example, using indigenous and biodegradable products, for example, cooking oil. These are used cooking oils that are used as tea candles, and they also use solar panels, and they also provide tokens like these cookies 
for guests who are practicing um, environment conscious decisions throughout their state. And through these efforts, the resort was able to reduce its greenhouse emissions, water and electricity consumption, amounting to a reduction of approximately 40% of the resort's total running costs. So again, that just goes to show that circular economy can actually does not only make environmental sense, but it also make economic sense as well. And finally, for my last um, example, would be um, the case of El Nido Resorts. Uh, El Nido Resorts, if you're familiar with it, is a group of sustainable island resorts found in El Nido and in Taytay municipalities in Palawan, Philippines, and is currently operated by the Ten Knots Group. Next slide, please. So just like um, the two cases that I have shown, um, El Nido Resorts or ENR is actually a brand that focuses on sustainability and resilience through what they call a quadruple bottom line strategy that um, the company employs to advocate responsible tourism, um, not only to the tourists or guests, but also to their staff as well. So just like Masumi, um, ENR also values education and training, wherein they engage not only visitors, but also their staff in their conservation efforts. So in one of their initiatives, they call it the Be Green. So green stands for Guard, Respect, Educate, El Nido. So this is a set of training seminars for uh, resort staff, wherein they cover topics from ecological solid waste management, water conservation, down to environmental legislation. And this kind of training and education initiatives have also been extended to its community, the local community surrounding El Nido, wherein they also provide training programs to public schools um, to host students, uh, local boatmen, security personnel, fishermen, LGU personnel, among others. And of course, the same efforts of education are also applied to visitors um, by not only engaging them in low impact and sustainable guest experiences, but as you can see, um, the local tour guides could also educate the visitors of what the flora and fauna is in the area. And finally, um, part and parcel of ENR's effort to recognize the value of research, such as what Dr. Paler has been doing, um, ENR has also been active in supporting scientific studies that enhance the knowledge about the flora and fauna in the area. So next slide, please. So to summarize these three cases, um, the cases that have I have shared with you are just actually a few of the many unexplored examples illustrating how circular economy can actually be embedded in the tourism and hospitality operation. And what all these three business model types shown us is that um, they have a common ground, and that is the potential to help drive significantly higher research productivity than alternative linear concept models. And other underpinning this movement um, that was showed in the three cases is the shift to a uh, circular economy that is underpinned by the concept of sustainable tourism or sustainability, which is about regenerating and balancing um, between natural, cultural, and human capitals. And finally, to conclude for my final slide, um, how do we go about this? How do we transition to from a linear to a circular economy? So in reality, um, it is important for us who are here today to acknowledge that the transition to circular economy in the country is a long and maybe an arduous process because of the many social, cultural, political, and economic barriers that are existing. However, despite these barriers, um, several seeds could actually be planted to spearhead this transition. First, um, as mentioned a while ago, again, by Dr. Paler, and I think would be echoed later on by our next speaker, one of the prerequisites for circular economy and sustainable tourism in the Philippines is actually a legislative and a policy backbone that addresses environmental and social issues relating to tourism. Um, and I would dare say that this just this needs to go beyond the national level, but also must extend at the regional level as well. Um, and this is especially necessary. Such policies are necessary in areas specifically where communities are heavily dependent on natural assets, such as um, tourism, fishing, agriculture, among others. 
So part and parcel of creating this uh, policy support is, of course, a coherent and effective waste management facilities um, and other policies that could influence industry operations. Second, I'd like to point out um, the value of mainstreaming what they call zero carbon enterprises. Again, as mentioned a while ago, the Luyon is already part of the zero carbon resource projects. But then again, um, these could be further expounded to other enterprises. Um, instead of looking at zero carbon enterprises and, as an exception, maybe we could take steps to make this um, mainstream. So maybe um, a push towards sustainable tourism could start by introducing or reducing the consumption of sea, uh, reducing consumption, resource consumption, and of course, um, curbing CO2 emissions and decreasing dependence on other natural resources. And of course, to realize this, government agencies should advocate the use of renewable energy, for example, in small-time businesses and even to larger establishments such as resorts. And third, similar to my second point, um, I do believe that how tourism in the country is branded remains a very critical aspect to transition, um, to transitioning. For example, tourism branding actually needs to raise its pitch explicitly to carry key messages of responsible tourism to increase tourists' consciousness of their behavior toward the environment and people. And um, as I discussed in my first few slides, and of course, as emphasized already by Dr. Paler again, um, circular economy acts as a daily compass for us, actually. It's a compass that guides our daily decision making, whether to repair, reuse, or renovate a certain item, whether we purchase something. Um, again, this kind of model or thinking, thinking could actually be extended to the choices made by the tourists or visitors like you and me. And finally, again, as emphasized a while ago, stakeholder engagement, and as shown also in the three cases, is very important in transitioning to circular economy. Because at the end of the day, um, this transition actually boils down to engaging and educating stakeholders. In, in, in this sense, um, it is important for us to also um, foster public-private um, tourism stakeholder collaborations that also cuts across industry. So meaning cross industry co coalitions are also important in this case. And um, that integrates tourism as a core economic development lever, not only for um, providing or um, contributing to economic progress, but also in um, facilitating circular economy strategies. And to this end, um, I would like to emphasize that a need for a new tourism thinking in, th um, in the industry is obviously necessary. And, and, and the circular economy model actually offers a compelling and new paradigm and a set of tools that could actually assist stakeholders in achieving an innovative, balanced, and resilient tourism industry. And I hope that through this brief discussion, uh, I hope I'm in time, um, I have illustrated how tourism industries um, can not only contribute to, um, to, the, to the transition to circular economy, but can also act as powerful enablers of the circular economy. And that ends my presentation. Thank you and maraming salamat.